Hey guys, welcome to a new video. It has been a while since I last followed a vintage beauty guide. So we're back today. I found another one and it's gonna be really fun. We're gonna follow this. I'm gonna be following the makeup section from a book called Home Beauty Course by Marjorie Ulrich, who was a New York socialite in the 1920s. She was nicknamed Bubbles and she was fairly well known around those parts of America. Unfortunately, she passed away young in childbirth, but we are going to be following her beauty tips today from this book that she published in 1927. Before we get started with that, I did want to tell you a little bit more about the jewelry that I'm wearing today because this video is kindly sponsored by Ana Luisa and they are currently running a sale on their website for 20% off everything. There is a link to that in the description box below, but I am wearing some new pieces from them. Uh, I have this necklace, which is a gorgeous, gorgeous, dainty gold chain with two interlocking circles, rings. <laughs> One is smooth and the other has uh, this kind of ridged texture to it. Absolutely love that. And I have the bracelet to match with that. Both are uh, adjustable size, but I absolutely adore these. I have worn them loads since I received them. These, like all of the Ana Luisa pieces that I own, are just such beautiful dainty jewelry really simple and charming that's the way i like my jewelry best i think that suits me the most yeah just really dainty minimal feminine i have been an ambassador for them for several years now and i'm always happy to work with them because they really focus on sustainability they use recycled materials to make their jewelry with all the gold that they use is recycled they only use lab grown diamonds and they are currently carbon neutral which is awesome so yes i definitely definitely recommend you check out Anne louise if you're looking for some nice jewelry to wear or to gift someone their piece are amazing quality, really affordable for the quality that you get. Oh, another thing that they do is to produce the jewelry in small batches so that they eliminate any excess waste. All in all, they're doing great on the sustainability front. They produce beautiful, beautiful, great quality jewelry. And yeah, I can't recommend them enough. So as I mentioned, they are running a 20% off sale on their website. There is a link in the description box below that will take you straight there. So do be sure to check them out. And now let's do some makeup. This beauty guide was published in 1927 and the 20s are one of the earlier decades where makeup is just coming into the mainstream. So there wasn't a lot of experience with makeup yet, a lot of knowledge, but Marjorie here shares some really good tips on how to use makeup in your favor and to make sure that it enhances your beauty rather than taking away from it. Marjorie mentions having studied the art of makeup for 15 years and consulting with various experts all around the world. She's flexing in here about having questioned the greatest beauty specialists in France and England and her own country. So yeah, apparently she has done a lot of research to share this knowledge with us. So I will gladly follow her tips today, see what happens, see how I come out of this. So basically she's going to give us a couple of rules according to your type. Um, and my type is brunette with a round face. Before going into the actual makeup tutorial, she does stress the importance of good health, healthy skin, um, good maintenance on your skin, keeping it clean, cleansing it and keeping it moisturized, which are good tips. <laughs> and then there's a bit about how wearing the right makeup might get you a husband. This is the 20s after all. <laughs> the first subchapter in this chapter is how to choose and use rouge and powder. All rouging should be done over a thin, even coat of powder. Be sure to apply the powder over the neck and chest also, so that no line shows where the powder begins and ends. For the sake of keeping this video you know, to an acceptable length, I'm gonna only read the bits that apply to me. You can purchase and download this book off of the Glamour Days website, so I will leave a link to that in the description box as well. She says that for a blonde or a brunette with a blonde skin, powder should be of a flesh shade as this blends most naturally with blonde coloring. Dark brunettes should use white powder or one with a cream tint. So I have a face powder here which is slightly tinted. It says transparent on the back, um, but as you can see, it has a little bit of a light skin tone. So I think this qualifies as something that I can use on my fair brunette skin, I guess. At the bottom of this chapter, there are a couple of general rules <laughs> that you can abide by when doing makeup, which I think are actually important to read first 
Maybe they should be at the beginning of this chapter. But anyways, some new general rules is the subtitle of this chapter. Please always remember that daintiness is one of the most powerful weapons a woman or girl can possess. And daintiness, in some mysterious way, can never, never be suggested if you apply rouge and powder on a skin that isn't perfectly clean, nor if you apply it too heavily. Always seek good light in applying your makeup. It is absolutely necessary to achieve that softly, smoothly beautiful effect. I think we have that down. I am right across from a window. <laughs> your powder puff is an important implement. It shouldn't be of down because such a puff makes it almost impossible to apply powder evenly, which I can imagine. I've always wondered how those work. A puff made of lamb's wool, one of velour or fine chamois skin, does much better. And these should be kept fresh and clean. I have a velour puff here which should work. Let me warn you once more against powder around the eyes. It isn't at all becoming, except in most unusual instances, when there is ugly darkness of skin to overcome. And it does tend to make one appear older. And of course, you'll always take care to remove traces of powder from the eyebrows. I think my dark circles, which are very noticeable to me, wouldn't be noticeable enough um, to her for me to warrant powdering near my eyes. So I think I'm gonna refrain from that and just apply a thin, even layer of powder as suggested. Powder would have been applied um, over a vanishing cream, which is also suggested in this book. I just applied a moisturizer prior to filming this. Um, the cream is basically just there to make sure that the makeup sticks, but any a slightly sticky layer should do the trick. Oh, whoops. Did go over my eyelids just a little bit, but it's, again, a thin layer. Dare say that our powders today look a little bit more natural in general compared to what they used in the 20s. So maybe I can get away with it. Powder in the 20s would have been tinted, and she does, in fact, give you those color recommendations. Okay, there we go, powder done. Let's be sure to get it out of the eyebrows. And lashes. Brunettes should choose a rouge dark and rich in shade. I have one here that I think is my darkest, most vibrant blush. And I do actually think that this one suits me really well. So that's what I'm gonna use. To know how to place this, I need to mind my Shape. Remember that brilliant color in the cheeks is never considered becoming in the daytime. You want the fresh, alluring rose which proclaims youth and health. At night, in making up for artificial light, you can allow yourself much more color. Following are some highly important, definite rules for the application of rouge in the artful way which accentuates beauty and conceals defects. Illustration number one shows the right way to rouge if you have a round face and fairly high cheekbones. Apply rouge up and down, which makes the cheeks seem less full. Color may be becomingly bright in the center, then blend it towards the edges so softly and delicately that it melts into the natural color on your skin. By putting the color emphasis on the cheekbones, you slenderize your face. Rouge well towards the temples, but be careful to leave an unrouged space between temples and ears. Also, do not let your rouge come too close to the nose. All right, let me just follow that illustration then. I'm gonna use a brush to apply that mostly here, and then up and down along the outside of my face, but not too close to the temples. It feels a little bit 80s to me, but I don't think it's unflattering. I think it looks quite nice. So let's move on to the next step, beautifying the eyes. The eyes are often the most effective features of a woman's face. They speak more directly her personality. Their beauty, therefore, should be enhanced in every possible way. Just as an attractive frame sets off a picture, so do the brows and lashes emphasize the beauty of the eyes. There are some fortunate women who naturally have beautiful brows and lashes, but most of us find it expedient to assist nature here. 
The art of beautifying the eye is more difficult to master than any other part of makeup. The rewards, however, are great and instantaneous. <laughs> So she starts by talking about the eyebrows. We're gonna see how much I can do here because I am not really willing, apologies, to pluck my hair, to pluck my eyebrows 20s thin. So we'll just see how far I get with my natural brows the way they are right now. Consider carefully your type of face before shaping the brows. When a face is round, a pronounced arch is most becoming. Keep your eyebrows smooth and well-groomed by brushing them with an eyebrow brush. You can definitely do that. Then use an eyebrow pencil to carefully accentuate the shape you desire. So, a pronounced arch it is for me. Uh, I think I can accentuate that a little bit by making the center of my eyebrows higher. And then pulling down the tail a bit. I'm also gonna comb up the center of my brow a bit to give the illusion of a more pronounced arch. Unless you are a pronounced brunette, don't use a black pencil. Medium or dark brown is more becoming and doesn't leave that undesirable made up look. All right, I did well on that one. <laughs> If there is a ring under the eyes or the skin seems unbecomingly dark, cover ever so slightly with the faintest touch of rouge. Blend most carefully so that it imp imperceptibly emerges with the tint of the cheeks. So if I wanted to kind of cover up my dark circles, I could just extend my blush up a little bit. I'm honestly not sure if that's such a good idea, but we can try. Maybe it works. I'm just using whatever's left on my brush and I'm gonna add more. I'm not entirely sure that does much and I can't really imagine that looking too great. Mm -hmm -hmm. Definitely not gonna apply more because she very much advises against that. And now I am going to tell you a little secret known only to a few. A small bit of cold cream or cleansing cream rubbed on the upper lid and under the eye near the nose gives that natural dewy look that we read about in poetry and sometimes see in real life. It is most attractive. All right, so a little bit of cream. Vaseline? Let's try Vaseline. Just a tiny little bit. I have some Vaseline here, so on the eyelids. And then under the eyes near the nose. I must say that is actually very becoming. It reflects the light very nicely. And those are spots that even nowadays we would apply shimmery products or something that highlights the area a little bit. So this is something we still do. We just wouldn't use cream for that nowadays. But yes, this is actually very pretty and a great way to spruce up your look a little bit, even if you don't want to wear makeup. Beading the lashes, if skillfully done, often adds a great deal to the attractiveness of the eye. But I advise the amateur to practice beading them many times when she is staying at home before trying it when going out. Beading of the eyelashes. This is a fascinating 1920s makeup technique where um, the eyelashes are made up with a type of makeup products. I guess the type of wax that you melted and then applied onto the eyelashes with a wooden applicator. It's kind of like a mascara-ish type of thing. Tinted black and uh, waxy so that when you pull it across your lashes it leaves a little bead of wax on the tip of the lash and this would make the lashes appear darker, longer, fuller, etc. I'm afraid I don't have anything similar to that. What I can do is clumpy mascara, because it kind of looks like clumpy mascara, <laughs> especially if you don't look too up close. So I'm gonna apply a layer of mascara and just apply a little bit extra on the very tips of my eyelashes. But honestly, just applying many layers of mascara gives a very similar look, because the beading technique gives a very spider lashes um, type effect as well. So I think just very clumpy mascara is about as close to that as I can get right now. I'm gonna make sure that I have that little bit of a mascara clump at the end of my brush. I'm just gonna 
swipe that across the tops of my lashes here. This technique lost popularity when the quality of film increased and you had better close-up shots of the leading ladies. Um, that is when they decided that it wasn't such a great look after all. <laughs> this would have been mostly used by actresses and um, in nightlife, so for going out, more or less beaded eyelashes. <laughs> so the last step is lipstick. The arts of the lipstick. Choose the color of your lipstick, light red or dark red, with careful regard for the color of your complexion. I'm just gonna use my favorite here. This is MAC Russian Red. I think this is a flattering shade on me. Slightly dark, good for brunettes. Shaping of the lips is a most important part of makeup, but one which must be carefully employed. I don't think I have a mouth that is too big or too small necessarily. If anything, maybe a little too small. A mouth that is too small can be made to look larger by extending the color to the very edge of the corners. If the lips are well shaped, it is best not to try to improve their contour. Just tint them delicately to accentuate natural beauty. Lipstick will have been applied with a brush during this time. Okay, I have dragged the lipstick into my corners just ever so slightly, but other than that, I have decided to stick to my natural lip shape. And I think, I think that brings me to the end of the 1920s makeup guide. So I do assume that this is a daytime makeup, maybe except for the lashes, but there is no eye makeup, no eyeshadow in any case, just blush, lips, and uh, lashes a little bit. And I do believe that this guide was made for the average woman, so obviously this isn't stage makeup or meant for film, um, but just for everyday use. And I do have to say, I love it. I think it looks very pretty. Maybe beside the lashes, I would do the lashes a little bit more subtly. I don't think beading is necessarily the most flattering technique to use for eyelashes, but even still with the lashes, I just think this is a very pretty, timeless look. I think it could work very well pass for 40s as well. 40s and 20s makeup is fairly similar in general, just the lip shapes are different. I even like the blush. I tend to wear a lot less blush myself. I did accentuate it a little bit so that you could at least see what I'm doing, but I think I could even add more onto this for a nighttime look and it will still look good. Marjorie, I must say, these tips are fairly good. I definitely like the outcome. I will gladly keep wearing this for the rest of the day. So yeah, I'd love to know what you guys think. How do you like my 1920s makeup? <laughs> I really hope you enjoyed this video, guys. Hope you enjoyed watching. If you did, don't forget to give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for lots more beauty, fashion, lifestyle, and sewing content. I wanna give another massive thank you to Ana Luisa for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to check out the Link in the description box that takes you straight to their sale. There is another video here that I think you might also enjoy. You can go watch next. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye!